Well, one fellow who has certainly experienced this cross-country clash as a member of the Tiger Cats coaching staff, and of course as a broadcaster, is John Salavanis, and he's joined us with uh, his pregame salutations. But I'll tell you, he's we, we understand that he is at a remote location, not where he normally would be. John, are you with us? Can you hear us? I can hear you, Bubba, and I am in a remote spot, but uh, it's a road game. <laughs> What's going on? Where, where, yeah, where are you? And uh, yeah, just tell us about what's going on. Well, uh, you know, I had problems with the phone at home, so we're up on the mountain up here uh, in Beansville, uh, using a cell phone for this. <laughs> you couldn't, you, you couldn't use your cell phone at home. It wasn't my cell phone. I had to borrow one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Well, uh, well, coach, you know, we we were just talking about how I think the offensive line is going to have to have its best game for a number of reasons tonight and uh can you you know we always come to you about o-line speak about what what do you think needs to happen tonight for the hamilton to come out victorious well number one they got to find uh out where Betts is playing and make sure they've got him covered this guy is the leading uh sacker in the league with 11 and they compare him to bc's uh, brent johnson who in 2-5 and 2-6 seasons had 34 sacks in those uh, combined for those two seasons. So they've got to find bets, and they've got to make sure that they have a plan to handle him uh, on the pass rush. Coach, I'm going to switch gears a bit and, and talk about um, field position in the return game a bit here. Uh, both of these teams are struggling in starting – field position per drive on average they're both these are the last two in the league and they're also the last two in penalties on kick returns they have dynamic returners but getting clean returns and getting your offense started uh, at a good yard line or even in the opposing end of the field goes a long way to scoring points so how do you kind of change that but how do you try? How, sorry, how do you kind of keep that in the <laughs> in that stat line for the BC team, but change it for your side? Well, Andy, what you're talking about in the CFL <clears throat> is field position, and that depends on special teams to a great extent. Now, you've talked about Hamilton where they started. Hamilton's not scored a TD when they're forced to start inside their own 20, and and we know penalties are big when they occur, but they're especially bad when they're on special teams and especially bad on kick returns where Hamilton has 17 kick return penalties. Now, the only team that's worse is BC. They have 19. And this really, Andy, could be the difference in this game. Who can avoid the penalties, especially on kick returns? You saw last night where uh, Leak uh, for Toronto had a great punt return late in the ball game, and that was the difference in the points. Sorry, Coach. Yeah, okay, I got you out there. Um, yeah, so it's going to be really important to uh, to stay clean and play well. Now, i got to ask you, you got Scott Milanovic now. It's your second week as a offensive coordinator. Last week, you're, you're coming after the bye you can't really change the entire offense and implement your own playbook in that short amount of time because there's so many moving parts when it comes to uh, football and an offense in general. You have protection schemes, uh, you know, running plays, passing plays. So you gotta you gotta work hand in hand with the offensive line coach. But given an extra week and that being a long week, even um, with the nine days since they played last, how much more of Scott Milanovic's playbook? would you expect to see tonight and what kind of changes could you make in that time? Well, I think the first change and the things that they need to concentrate on, <clears throat> you need good first down production. Hamilton's average gain on first down is, is uh, respectable. It's a 6.3, but converting that second down, they're only 44% of the time. So teams that convert second down better than their opponents this season, Andy are 33 and 10. Now, having said that, they also need some big plays. Uh, that's a run of 20-plus yards or a pass uh, of 30-plus yards. 
We've got Butler. He has three runs of 20-plus. Powell, in his three games, only has one pass of 30-plus yards. So when we look at the quarterback situation, which Milanovic has a, has a good handle on, uh, in, in Powell's 102 attempts, he's completed 69 with one TD and three interceptions. And when you really uh, gear down on this thing, as a percentage, Powell is 75% in his passes uh, of 0 to 10 yards. And when he goes from 10 to 20 yards, he drops to 63%. And at 20-plus yards, he's at 30%. So really, I think what Milanovic has to work on is the idea that we have to have first down production, and then we have to have Butler be able to get that two or three yards for us on second down. I talked about Powell working on having poise in the pocket and be able to sort of see downfield and go through his reads while there's a lot of action right in front of him with the defense and offensive line. How do you coach that in, in a young player like Taylor Powell uh, coming off that seven-sack game last week? Well, you know, uh, if I'm the quarterback, I'm not going to hang on to the football because that's what everybody's after. So go ahead and, and let that ball go. And that goes back to the idea, give him that first read, that quick read uh, that he can get the ball out of his hands. Uh, if BC chooses to blitz, which they have a very good secondary, they don't have to blitz a lot. But if they choose to blitz, they've got to look for that hot receiver. And he's got to get the ball in Butler's hands. You know, Butler in the past two games, and he has 34 touches for 260 yards. Uh, now, you know, you control the line of scrimmage when you get the ball out of your hands and into your playmaker's hands. You know, Coach, you take a look at the BC Lions record, seven wins, three losses, second place in the West Division. But you dig a little bit deeper, and you see that they have a negative turnover ratio. Does that surprise you? And how do the Tiger Cats take advantage of that? I'm not sure, Bubba, that, that they can take advantage of it. Uh, in in respect to what our secondary plays as, we have to be very careful that we don't go man cover because we're not doing a good job in that particular area. But at the same time, we got to talk about takeaways. And so you go back to the line of scrimmage and your, your pressure up front and, and cause uh, VA uh, to make a bad read and or get rid of the ball uh, prematurely. And in, in that way, maybe you, you can cover up some of the mistakes. So you, if you don't want to go man coverage, what kind of defense would you be playing? You, you're talking about more zone blitzes? or well, How would you call this game if you're Mark Washington? Well, I, I think the zone blitz is a great idea, and I think you've got two good guys that can blitz off uh, uh, of his defense, and that's Thurman in the middle and uh, Lawrence on the outside. So you've got to be able to do some things with your interior line, maybe drop a tackle out once in a while or drop a defensive end off and bring pressure from one side. Overload their offensive line. Have four coming from one side and two from the other side and see if they can pick up the blitzes. Coach, real t uh, close on time, as always. It's always the enemy. Let me throw you just one quick one here. You know, you're playing underneath this BC Place Dome. I know it will be open today, but is there any pluses or minuses when you're playing in, the, in this kind of a facility? Well, I mean, it's the only, I guess it's really the only, only one in the league like it. Well, you know, realistically, we played there one time at the 4 o'clock start, and what happens is it gets really hot uh, during that period of time. Uh, in BC and, and uh, whether the dome's open or closed it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference that's the heat of the day 4 p.m. He is coach John Salavanis with his pregame salutations we certainly appreciate your time and I guess you can get back home now and certainly thank you for your time and your and of course your expert opinions there coach you're more than welcome Bubba talk to you later